everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you six selections for tomorrow's horse race in action. Now before we get stuck into them I quickly just want to reflect on how our tips have performed today. At the current time recording we still have one more pick to run tonight at Newcastle so fingers crossed we can uh, get a good result there. He runs in the lucky last but away from that it's not been a bad day. We had a winning nap at Newmarket with Twilight Jet absolutely bolted up in the end for Michael O'Callaghan and it was a smart move dropping him back down to five furlongs so I hope some of you were on there. Away from that though it was a little bit uh, disappointing with Geordie Deschamps just couldn't quicken when it mattered in the end. Did make one or two errors at his fences but he was still there in contention and travelling quite nicely but uh, yeah just couldn't get involved uh, in the race going down the home straight and was badly outpaced and yeah like I say he just couldn't live with the remainder of the field so that was a little bit disappointing there and then Magical Lagoon I think she ran an okay race but in Spiral looked the real deal today I thought she might get found out against some of these fillies but yeah she uh, did the job very well I think you have to mark up that performance so yeah that's uh, how our tips have performed today but hopefully we can do a little bit better tomorrow and give you some more winners so like I said I've got six selections for tomorrow's racing and we're going to be going to York for the first one of them where we're going to the group three Rockingham Stakes I'm going to take a chance here with an extra tip with canonized for Tom Marquand and William Haggis in the colours of the Cheveley Park stud. Now this horse at the current time recording was available at 9-2 and I'm going to recommend a one point win bet here. Now this horse canonized, she's been to the well quite a few times this season and the last time we saw her she finished second in a group three at uh, I think that was actually quite a nice race for the grade. That was against Phillies and she's going to be taking on the boys tomorrow but I still think nonetheless it was a very very good performance and I think she could have a lot more to come over this longer trip. She's actually bred to get slightly further. So I think uh, this trip tomorrow uh, will definitely play to her strengths. I don't think the ground will be too much of an issue either. And also as well, she's drawn on the right part of the track. I think being uh, drawn low on the sprint course is actually uh, better for you than being drawn high. So yeah, I think that's where you want to be looking tomorrow if you're having any bets on the sprint course at York. My, my suggestion would be to back horses drawn lower. I backed a couple of horses there today. Uh, the York and the horses that were drawn low, uh, they were, in my opinion anyway, having the majority of the better ground. So yeah, I don't think um, Canonize is in a bad place at all tomorrow. And also as well, she gets the Phillies allowance and William Haggis' team are in tremendous form. I think they're operating at a 30% strike rate. So lots of things in, in the favour of Canonize tomorrow. So you've got Ever Given in there. But I just wonder if he might just find this uh, a step too far. I think some of those sales races can be a little bit like Mickey Mouse contests. And it's normally um, horses that are actually top of the betting in those kind of races that normally don dominate them. You don't get too many big price winners of these sales races. We saw uh, Marco Botti saw uh, last week at Newmarket win. We saw the likes of Harry this season, Ever Given, you know. They've just been uh, towards the top of the bet and been delivering the goods. So I'm not sure um, I'm not sure uh, if Ever Given will win this. And I'm just quite uh, keen on the chances of Canride. So yeah, she's going to be my first tip of the day tomorrow. We then go with my long shot, which runs in the next race at Chepstow with a horse here in the 225 called Brave Eagle for Nico de Boinville and Nicky Henderson. And currently available at 11 to 1 with uh, quite a few firms at the moment including the likes of Skybet, Paddy Power and Betfair who are all paying four places on this race. I'm going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection here. Now this horse Brave Eagle we don't see him very often. Last time we saw him he ran in the rehearsal chase at Newcastle where I remember actually putting him up that day because it was the first time he'd had his ground in quite a while. He's a, a horse that's really ground dependent. He doesn't like it getting too tested and it's currently good ground at Chepstow so the conditions should be no excuse for him and he's now down to attempt a mark of 150. He ran in this race last year where arguably I think it was a better renewal won by Secret Investor. He won he ran off the mark that day of 156. He's now down to 150 which is actually two pounds below his last win in mark his last win came uh, in the summer plate uh, race at uh, utoxa when he won that day off a mark of 152 but i think he's well treated um on his old form and the conditions will be in his favor and he's run well in this race in the past actually he finished uh, third in it back in 2018 considering i think he's still only a nine-year-old brave eagle he's still uh, still not uh, fully exposed but i just think we know that tomorrow he's going to have loads of things in his favor and I, I think some of the horses at the top of the market in here 
I think they might just need the run. And Brave Eagle does have a good record fresh. More importantly as well, another fact that's kind of gone under the radar. Obviously, everybody's looking to Paul Nichols this weekend. And I will be putting up a Paul Nichols horse a little bit later on. But um, Nicky Henson's yard have been in great form. They're operating at a 50% strike rate. Six winners from their last 12 runners. And they had a winner today as well at um, Chips at Big Price, um, even though he might have been a little bit fortunate. But still, nonetheless, the yard are going uh, along nicely. And Brave Eagle has got lots of things in his favour tomorrow. And if he does retain any of his ability, which I think he can, um, I think he was going to be banging out tomorrow. And he's quite a big price in the contest, uh, context of this race. So he's going to be my long shot of the day. We then go to my next best, which runs in the Cesarevich, the 335. And I thought Burning in Victory was the way to play here. For Will Buick and Willie Mullins, going to recommend a 0.5 each way selection at 15 to 2. You can get um, eight paces on this race for Skybet, and I'm going to recommend, like I say, a 0.5 each way selection here. But Burning Victory tomorrow, I think, has got quite a few things in her favour. Now, this is a big race, you've got 30 odd runners, but I just think that uh, she could be the, potentially the class act in the field. Now, She's quite unexposed on the flat, in my opinion, since she's joined Willie Mullins' yard. Um, she started off over hurdles with Mullins, and she did quite well. She obviously as well won the Grade 1 uh, Triumph Hurdle back in 2020 when uh, she uh, she uh, took, took the surprise race there when Goshen obviously unseated Jamie Moore at the last. But yeah, bur burning um, victory that day. What I thought was a worthy winner after Goshen, at least, anyway. But um, yeah, she, like I say, she she did the job well that day. And after the, since then, she's she's been quite lightly campaigned, but she's had a very interesting time of things this season. She's actually been kept away uh, from the shores. She raced once in Ireland at Galway, where she ran okay, but she's been applying her trade in France, and she's won two races quite comfortably there on the flat over uh, two miles she won at Clairefontaine and she also as well won at Deauville and she's got an official rating in this race of 94 I think she's got a few pounds to play in this race she does have to carry a penalty I believe but uh, still nonetheless I think she's um, well treated in this race the ground shouldn't be a problem we'll know she'll stay Will Bjork as well is a positive and Willie Mullins as well he knows how to win this race he's won the last three renewals I just think there's a lot to like about the chances of burning victory drawn in still 25 to be fair, the draw doesn't make too much of a difference. I don't think you want to be drawn particularly high, but horses drawn around this area in the past have done pretty well. So Burning Victory's got a lot of ticks in the boxes for this race tomorrow. And I'd be disappointed at least if she couldn't be there or thereabouts. And I think she does have a bit of scope off her mark. So for me, Burning Victory, I think this has been her target uh, for uh, the se season. And uh, for, yeah, for me, I think she'll go very close in that race. So she's going to be my next best of the day. We then go for an extra tip at Hexham for their jumps card there in the 355. I thought Greystown here for uh, Sam and Stuart Coulthard could be the way to play. Currently available at 11 to 4. And I'm going to recommend a one point win bet. Now, this nine year old has got a good record at Hexham. It's his favourite track. He's won here three times in the past. And I think he's still off a, a workable mark of 92. He's been rated higher in the past. But last time we saw him, uh, the old boy, he was travelling so well over uh, two miles and a half, uh, two and a half miles that day, um, until he, he fell with a couple of fences to go. And he, he was travelling really well. I think he would have gone very close in that race. He's dropping back down to two miles tomorrow, which I think will really suit him. He might be able to get an easy time of things up on the front as well. He's a horse that likes to be ridden handily, and he won this race as well last year. So I do think he's got a lot in his favour tomorrow, and he's been showing this season that he is up, and he still does have a lot of his old ability. So I just think that this isn't a particularly strong race, and I think he's going to take all the beating, and I'm hoping he can get another win at his beloved Hexham. So yeah, Greystown it is um, in the 355 there. We then go to the Nat, which runs in the 405 at Chepso with Grand Swan C, currently available at 11 to 4. Has been smashed with a couple of other firms as shorts 9 to 4, but 11 to 4 was available the likes of uh, Betfair and Paddy Power. Now, this horse, Grand Swan C, I think has got a great chance to Harry Cobden and Paul Nichols. Obviously, we know Nichols loves to target this meeting, and Grand Swan C has got a fantastic record at this particular meeting. He's won here twice before in 2018 and 2020, arguably, he nearly put up a career best effort when he won on his seasonal reappearance last year, bolting up over this course and distance, and he did the job very well. Now, he was off a much higher mark that day. That was obviously a pattern company chase, but still, nonetheless, he has fallen down the weights to a very tempting mark of 142. And if you go on a lot of his hurdles form and his, and his chase form, 
he's at least better than that. On his day, I think he's capable of running into the mid-150s. So I do think Ryan Sonsi, he's very well in here. He's got a nice low racing weight. I'm hoping he might get the run of the race as well. He likes to be handy, or that's the way he was ridden last year. I'm hoping that Harry Cobden is going to be nice and prominent on him. And if he can get into a good rhythm, I think he might just have too much class for some of these horses. And I think the ground will be in his favour as well. So I just think he's got a lot in his favour tomorrow. Paul Nichols only had one win today on the first day of the, the Persian War meeting. But I think they've got a better hand to play tomorrow. And I think Grand Sonsi, I think he'll take all the beat in there. And I think he'll cash in on the reduced handicap mark. So that's why he's going to be my nap of the day. We then have one more selection which runs in the all weather um, in the evening at Chelmsford in the 7.30. Where I'm going to go here with Vicenzo uh, Cossi for Reese Clutterbuck claiming five. Riding for Patrick Chamins. Now this horse was comfy winner last time when he just... Um, um, got the better, I think it was of Irish Times over this course and distance last week. He was a good winner that day, but he was only raised a pound by a handicapper for, for that win. And I think he's potentially still well treated on his old form and is more than capable of defying that mark in this race tomorrow. Now, Reese Clutterbuck as well is keeping the ride, claiming a handy five pounds. And I just think this horse will win again. Like I say, Pat Chamins is a team in really good form. They're operating at a 40% strike rate. And this nine-year-old, he just seems to absolutely love the weather. He's got a good draw to work from as well tomorrow. Uh, stool 6. I think the favourite's drawn out in Stool 12, which in my opinion is a real negative. You don't want to be too, drawn too wide um, at Chepstow. It can be quite a, a, a tough um, ask from uh, those uh, those wide numbers. But I do think that um, I, I do think Vincenzo Cotti is well treated, like I say, on his old form. He normally runs this well at this time of year. I think he won a couple of times this time last year as well. So he's coming to to the uh, to his um is is kind of like derby point of the year, if that makes sense. But yeah, I just think he's got a good chance in this race tomorrow. And I think at seven to two, he should arguably be sh be shorter, and I think he should be favourite for the race. So that's why he's going to be my final and extra tip of the day. So there are the six selections for tomorrow's racing. If you're still enjoying these videos, remember to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe here to my YouTube channel at Lucky Loaders. Also as well, let me know in the comments box below what you'll be back in tomorrow. Also as well, if you want to follow me on social media, Twitter is the place to do so, where my handle is at LuckyLoader15. And if you want to find out a little bit more about myself, my website is www.chrisloaderracing.co.uk. So please go and responsibly. Hopefully we can have some winners for you tomorrow, and we'll be seeing you soon. <laughs>